Greetings everyone, I am Anweberwan Norman from It Pays to Fear God, and this video is another episode of Verse Breakdown. The verse for today is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, which reads, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. An angel of light is essentially somebody or an entity that is seen as righteous, seen as holy before God. Satan, obviously, who is not really an angel of light. After all, he's a wicked man. He's a sinner. If you read the Isaiah chapter 14 from verses 12 to 15 and Ezekiel chapter 28, he wants to paint himself as somebody who is righteous because humanity only goes for things that they see as holy. And the Bible has shown how Satan the devil does this. In Numbers chapter 16 from verses 1 to 50, we see that Abraham around Dathan, Korah, and the 250 princes, and on as well. They were not righteous people, but they wanted to show themselves like that by looking at Moses as somebody who wanted power for himself and not, you know, for God, if we number chapter 12 especially. And they wanted to show themselves or prove themselves as truly righteous when they were really doing Satan the devil's will. And Therefore, Satan the devil was looking like somebody who was righteous or an angel of light, even though eventually it came to prove that they were wrong and a bunch of people, a bunch me, lots of people who supported Abiram, Dathan, Kor, and on, and the 250 princes and others in their category, they were all destroyed. And in our time, the last days, Satan the devil is doing the same thing. God has promised that he will make a new heavens and new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. If read Isaiah chapter 65 verse 17, a place where people will care about their neighbor and not just about themselves, a place where there will be peace, tranquility, rest, no more war, etc. If read Psalm chapter 46 verse 9, Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4, Revelation chapter 21 from verses 1 to 5, etc. And Satan the devil knows this plan a lot more than we ourselves can ever know it. However, he wants to take the honor and glory to himself, so what does he do? He puts his people in first. His people are the ones that are setting up the charities. His people are the ones that will be making things that look like what God himself promised, but there is a lot of hypocrisy taped to the outside of it. So in reality, it's not really what God in the end would want. But how do we decode this? How do we differentiate between what Satan the devil is doing and what God is doing? Well, we first of all have to study the Bible to come and get an understanding of what God does and what Satan does. If you read that 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, so that as St. Paul put, put it, we will not be ignorant of his devices. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. And once we come and have that understanding, then we live our lives according to what God wants us to do. And when certain situations come up, when we want to get married, when we want to raise children, when we want to choose our friends, which are hopefully people who have heads like us, as in people who are like-minded with us. If you read that verse Peter, chapter 3, verse 8, we make sure that those people are not ones that look holy on the outside, but are actually wicked on the inside, but people who actually have good, righteous, and holy intent. And that's just at the normal level. And at the institutional level, institutions that we want to believe in, institutions that we want to support, be it the church or anything else, we have to make sure that they are truly holy. We shouldn't just be looking at the outside of them, whether they're the ones giving all the money, whether they're the ones that are doing all the charity, because that's not really righteousness. Righteousness is doing God's will. And very few people in fulfillment of Matthew chapter 7 and verses 13 and 14 are actually doing that. So we have to make sure it's actually being represented or put in the right order in those institutions. And he is putting judgment through Jesus Christ. If read Matthew chapter 25 and verses 31 and 32. And that's why he's allowing any of these kinds of things happen. It doesn't just allow Satan and the devil run in, take over institutions so that they can just deceive everybody. No, God also allows that so that he himself can make sure to separate his children from the wicked ones who will ideally run after those things. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit at the throne of his glory. 
And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set his sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you.